Merry Christmas, yo! That's right, today is Christmas and I just wanted to say, well, Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are all having a great time with your family and I hope you guys got whatever it is you wanted. Except for you stupid monkeys who like Goku and Saitama. If you guys couldn't tell by the video thumbnail already, I got a very special video for you guys today. I bet none of you bitches were expecting a video about Altair. Altair is one of my all-time favorite anime characters and yes, I am finally going to be talking about Yogiri and introducing both of these characters to my YouTube channel. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am. I finally get to talk about Altair. I absolutely love Altair and yes, she is one of my all-time favorite anime characters to ever exist. That is not a part of the Fate series or the Tawaru series. Yogiri is an overweight piece of shit! Instant death? Get that weak shit out of my face! But before we get into the quality ass content, you guys know me, I gotta cover some stupid comments before we get to the main video. Oh yeah, and this one is extra stupid, so be sure not to lose too many brain cells. This idiot said, One Punch Man has infinite multiverse and infinite dimensions. <laughs> I take back my Merry Christmas to the side to my fan base. I was just trying to be nice, but no, no. If you're gonna say some stupid shit like this, nope, it's done. I hope all you troglodytes get hit by a bus. Since it is Christmas, how about you drop me a like for this peak YouTube content? Now, to get this out of the way pretty quickly, this was a pixelated picture, and here it is when it's not pixelated. Space Monkey 720 was the very first person to get this picture correct. Also, this Beast Tamer anime is absolute dog shit, and I know a fucking idiot who thinks that this Beast Tamer anime is better than Chainsaw Man. You're a clown, dude. Now, guys, it's been a very long time coming, but Altair finally makes her appearance on this channel. Oh my god, I am so excited to talk about her. Before I named myself Othinus, I was actually really considering on calling myself Altair for my YouTube channel. But since I love Tawaru way more than Ray Creators, I decided to go with my favorite Tawaru character, which was Othinus. Anyways, with me finally being able to talk about Altair, there is a lot to cover. And when I mean a lot, I am not exaggerating. There is so much shit to go over on her hacks and where she scales to. But before I get to where she scales to, I want to go over all of her abilities because you guys know me. I will definitely be using Altair in the future. Oh, she will be back on my YouTube channel. I'm looking at you, Kaz. I'm fucking coming for you. There is so much to talk about and there's so much to go over with Altair as I previously just mentioned, but a good starting point to talk about is what her main ability is. Halopsicone is the primary power of Altair. This ability has many facets, ranging from extremely powerful movements to miscellaneous abilities. Although all of her powers stem from this ability, it is most commonly known that her general application for this is either telekinetic control over dozens of swords or she just erases things from existence. The first ability that I want to talk about is her third movement of the cosmos and that's called respiration exposition. This changes an aspect of a character. When used it changed Celestia's sword rebellion into a mass of flower petals. But this is just a small portion of her power. She can change anything into flowers. I'm looking at you you fucking piece of shit Superman. The next one I want to talk about is her ninth movement of the cosmos called fate restoration. This ability lets her erase plot elements. This can be used to erase something outright or even break Altair out of anything that's binding her. Also, I want you douchebags to know that whatever she just erased from existence right here what I just showed you was a concept that was brought into reality. That means she can destroy and erase abstract things along with real things. The next movement is called the 13th movement and this is called the outline origin. This reverts a target back to his or her original form in the story, thus eliminating any powers or forms that target did not have at the very beginning. This is also known as a way of saying she has the power to nullify anything that is not out of the original plot. The 14th movement of the cosmos is called the Vicissitude of Fortune. You know what? I'm not even going to try to repronounce these names because I, I, just, I just can't. I, there's just no way. Anyways, this ability reverses the principles of cause and effect, resulting in an attack that should have damaged her, but instead damaged the attacker. This ability is thought-based and doesn't require either movement or verbalization to use. Needless to say, she can control and manipulate causality. Like, what else is there to say? All right, guys, I want to take a step back really quickly and go back to when Altair said that she changed the principle of cause and effect that follows. Now, this is very huge because if you control a principle, that is way above a concept. And if you control a principle, that already puts you at a level of what can be considered outer. Now, let me explain this a little bit more. If you can control a principle, this means that you can manipulate, well, I mean, the fundamental lining of nature itself and everything behind nature itself. Since principles are 
the basis of the foundation of every concept that exists and doesn't exist. This allows the user to decide, create, destroy, and manipulate virtually anything and everything, thus supporting why she is omnipotent, like I said before. Hey, can a Yogiri control and manipulate principles? No, I don't think he fucking can. Can he only control and manipulate, I don't know, concepts, which are below principles? Also, I want you to understand that the attack that pierced her was a miracle-based attack. This therefore says that she is resistant to anything that is miracle-based when it comes to attack. God, I love to see it! Oh. God, oh, Altair is so fucking cool! The 20th movement of the cosmos is called Factor Mimic. This basically just lets her create an exact copy of the target, even as sophisticated as a mech from Ryo Kanyoya's Gigas machine. The 23rd movement of the cosmos is called Fate Reconstruction. This ability lets her redefine and rebuild, well, fate. It can be used to break and hold off events that are fated to occur in addition to create something from nothing. Another way to say this is that she can control and manipulate fate, and on top of that she can just basically reality warp she can do whatever she wants the 66th movement of the cosmos is called existence exchange after paralyzing and suppressing the powers of the target the user mortally wounded herself the target will then absorb even on a conceptual level effectively bypassing resurrection immortality and regeneration of the highest degree which would be a high godly after the movement is complete the target's body will be made into the users and leave the target non-existent her ability to regenerate from this is beyond high godly like she's a able to regenerate from being conceptually erased and destroyed. Also, since she used this ability on a being like herself, she has the ability to negate regeneration to the highest level, which in this fact would be beyond high godly. Oh yeah, also, hey, um, you know, I forgot to mention, but did you know that her weapon is omnipotent? Woo! I don't care what you say. This just makes Altair omnipotent. I, I don't care what you say. It also makes sense when she calls herself infinite and infallible, thus supporting the fact that she is omnipotent and all-knowing. Also, if it wasn't obvious enough, Altair isn't bound by something that simple as plot. She literally came from a fictional world to the real world on her own accord with her own powers. Now, before we go any further, we need to actually talk about what Altair actually is. Unlike a stupid little boy that looks like a generic main isekai protagonist Altair is not a living person she is an abstract existence that comes from a sketch yes she is a character in an anime that's in an anime mine blown. She is a non-corporeal being, meaning, again, she doesn't have a physical body and she is made out of a hologram or a physical image. Now, with that being said, she is not a living person, but a sketch that she herself brought into the real world. Also, she is immune to time traveling. She has a causality because Altair is an independent existence without a background or story that can be affected by normal creation methods. She also has the ability to bring people from a fictional world into the real world. A good example of this is when she brought Celestia into the real world. Now, when I say real world, I'm referring to the world where Altair was created. I'll get to the real, real world later. And yes, I'm talking about our world. Anyways, by her bringing Celestia into the real world, she has the ability to BFR people out of fiction. Yo, bro, bro, she, she can, she can BFR people out of fiction? Yo, yo, can Yogiri BFR people out of fiction? I, I, I don't think so. Sure, Yogiri can manipulate plot or whatever, but yo, to BFR someone out of fiction? Oh, hell no. Altair was unaffected by the intent of the creators to depower her. This is another way of saying you can't change or modify her stats, but let's get to talking about something way more interesting. Remember when I said that she's omnipotent? Here is another reason why she's considered one of the most powerful characters. Altair is so powerful that she doesn't even know all the abilities she has. Also, these powers that she is getting are infinite. Altair is a character that has every ability in anime to ever be created. Actually, not even just anime. Whatever power you can think of, Altair has. And no, I'm not wanking this ability. This is what the power of infinite abilities get. But Ultimus, it wasn't stated she could do a certain power like instant death. Yeah, it does. That's included in infinite abilities. Anything Yogiri has, Altair has. Now, let me get back to the infinite powers and let me explain it so you understand why she can use every ability to exist. While Sota, Celestia, and the others were talking about and discussing Altair's abilities, one of her most formidable powers is to continually update her powers. This is done by having anyone or multiple people create a story about her. Whatever story that person creates for Altair, that power in that story is giving to Altair to 
use. So if these stories continue, her abilities will forever expand. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in their world, I bet there was one person who gave her every ability imaginable and every resistance imaginable. You're gonna sit there and tell me that not one person would do that to Altair? Because that's just bullshit. You got people out here saying Goku's actually boundless and infinite layers. You got people saying SCP solos everything when in reality, they can't solo shit. Neptune solos SCP. Joker solos SCP. Point being in the world where Altair is at, there is one person that gave her infinite abilities and it even was stated that she has infinite abilities. If you can't classify his instant death as an infinite ability or in that pool of infinite abilities, you're just stupid. The next thing I want to talk about is Altair and her ability to warp reality, control space, time, and change the laws of the world. She's able to shape the world to her liking and create a universe without the rules of the previous one, allowing her and Cessna to live forever together. Now, with everything that I shoved down your throats, let me explain why Altair is high outer versal. Honestly, I'm just being nice by calling her high outer, but you know, that's just me. Altair is literally a buffy. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it sounds so funny when I say this. All right, let's, let's get to the first example. All right, example one. She left her own fictional world on her own and came to the real world where her creator was. Now, she is literally above fiction as shown before she was in an anime or she was a sketch that she herself brought to the world. That's already above fiction and you can't even deny that. Here's the second example that I want to show you. She is so above fiction that she actually impacts the real, real world animation studios. Her design was so hard for the actual anime animation studio team that they even had to reference this. Her existence was literally designed to make their jobs more difficult. She is beyond, beyond, beyond fiction and solo is your fodder verse. Woo! But just for you stupid power scalers, let me explain to you why she's high outer as a basis. Again, I could probably scale her a lot higher, but scaling Altair to high outer is more than enough for Yogiri. Yogiri isn't anything above what, 5D, 4D? Doesn't matter, not close to Altair. But guys, this is going to be a very long explanation and I'm going to give you a brief overview of the cosmology of Ray Creators and why she is where she is. Honestly, if you want to click off the video, I won't blame you because this is a lot of information, a lot of boring shit you need to understand that gets altered to high outer. Now, if you are still confused by my explanation, I really don't care because my opinion is objective, your opinion is subjective. The thing that I really want to emphasize first is that the real world or the creators is already 6D. Now, when we talk about oblivion, that means 7D. Again, to go back real quickly, the real world or the creators are the people that made the sketches like Altair. Setsuna will be a creator in the real world, which would be 6D for people who are not understanding. Now, the very first thing that you guys need to understand is that there are infinite worlds and infinite possibilities. Altair transcends this. Moreover, as per the guidebook, there consists of infinite possibilities for every creator and from which the creators can create their own world. And since their power of imagination can create worlds as possibilities, it can be deduced that the power of imagination or imaginary force can create an infinite number of worlds and from those worlds they can form infinite choices for every creator and even manipulate them at the same time. Did you get all that? Because I am nowhere near done. This is even further supported when it was shown that Blitz's store consists of multiple dimensions, realms, and worlds, which are all created and governed by his author, Saruga. Due to the fact that there exists infinite possibilities for every creator to create their world from and due to the fact that a creator in the verse called Frank Belknap Long was able to create a higher dimensional world of angled space that transcends space and time from one of the possibilities for him. Therefore, it can be theorized that an infinite number of higher transcending dimensions can be created from infinite possibilities present for the other creators creators. This is even further, further supported by Hiroi Ri. I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name, but this person right here was actually a writer for Ray Creators. So this guy does know what he's talking about in terms of his own verse. But now let's go even further than that. Meteora states that everything that has happened to them is not by chance or coincidence, but rather by fate or destiny, which is created by the infinite abyss beyond the end of the world of the gods with the world of gods here being the real world and the gods being the audience. So basically, from all the bits and pieces of evidence that we have gathered so far, it can be constructed that there exists this vast infinite abyss beyond outside and transcendental to the real world where the imagination or imaginative force exists that created and controls the fate of everyone and everything and all of creation, including the real world itself. The infinite abyss might seem kind of vague to a lot of idiots like the science of a fan base, but in this context of the cosmology and the setting of the verse, it would most likely mean the vast of nothingness outside the realm of the real world as 
well as creation itself. Now in the anime, it was said that Altair was trying to do what's called the Great Destruction or the Grand Reset section. Altair wanted to return all of the creation back to oblivion. And as such, it can be inferred that the original state of creation was oblivion itself and from the primal state of nothingness. The real world, as well as the story worlds, originated. This oblivion is synonymously used with the infinite abyss and can be described as the background on which creation exists and on a deeper level in the abyss the imaginative force exists which can be tapped into the people of the real world on a subconscious level allowing them to create and control worlds along with their fates concepts laws and much much more now let's continue with all this information that we just got in episode 21 when alter erased the universe we briefly get to see all of that remain as a white blank void and in which alter created another universe this blank white void which was briefly shown in the series may have been the abyss considering the fact that Altair and Setsuna transcended to become gods. Transcended to become gods. When Altair saved Setsuna, Altair was boosted by the audience to such a degree that she completely became a god while simultaneously creating a universe parallel to the real world for Setsuna to live. Moreover, she was also able to amp Setsuna to her own level of existence as a god to the point that their mere presence of Setsuna was stated to warp the universe, implying the gods like Altair and Setsuna can simply warp the laws of reality and of the universe just by their presence alone. Moreover, Altair's powers were boosted to such levels that she stated that she could create a universe inside another world inside a story, and that she could create infinite number of worlds and stories for Setsuna. This implies her powers have become on the same level as that of the people of the real world aka the creators and can freely use the concept of imagination without any restriction or condition. Now let me further this explanation a little bit more. The guidebooks state that they'll simply create infinite worlds and stories like I mentioned before allowing all of creation to flow through. In addition it also states that the model for the new world in which Cessna and Altair stand in is a Salar de Inuni in the central western part of Bolivia South America meaning Altair did create an alternate timeline similar to that of the real world while both of them ascended into godhood which is further confirmed with the novel further furthermore god altair and setsuna are unbound by the creators and audience of the real world this also ties in with how they are legitimate gods now who can freely create stories and worlds without any restrictions or conditions this also gives her resistance to the effects of imaginative force as they have become unbound by the audience who can use that power to affect all of creation now hold on let's take a step back ladies and gentlemen i understand I threw a fuck ton of information at you, but do you understand what this means? Uh, honestly, you probably you probably don't, but let me quickly go over this for you very quickly. Altair transcended the anime world which she is from when she was a sketch. She then even transcended the real world which was stated to have infinite possibilities and choices. Then later on after that, we get into the fact that Meteora states that beyond the real world lies the infinite abyss. Now in the infinite abyss is the white realm that we saw and she transcended that which was even stated by the author. So now we know that Altair transcends three domains as we will just call it. One being the fiction anime world, two being the real world, and three being the world above the gods, and then I guess technically the fourth domain if you want to get to the infinite abyss, which she did transcend, as it was stated by the author. And remember, each of these domains, as we'll call it, have infinite layers, possibilities, worlds, choices, whatever you want to be. It's got infinite everything. Now look, we are very far into this video, and I have not even touched Yogur yet, but did you guys get any of the information that I said before? Basically to dumb it down everything I said was that she is above infinite stories infinite worlds whatever you want to call it and she transcends all those to an infinite level beyond the actual novel look I'm not a huge Yogri person and I don't know like all all too much about him but I've done a quite a bit of research on him but nowhere does it say that Yogri is at this level of power or is scaling it's just no there's just no way th 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 there's just no way with the help of some of my friends and my reasoning for Altair to be high outer let me explain a couple couple more things to get the point across even more and to support my statements from before. The 1A stuff I'm talking about is the real world or the creator's world and that serves as a basis for it being 1A already. The presence of a multi-layer to their world would make them varying unspecified layers into 1A. If we go off the premise that each transcends the last, which given the use of terminology and its correlation within the verse, it specifically transcends it or something that's similar, that can be classified as multi-layered. As I stated before, there are infinite possibilities 
is present within it. These infinite possibilities can be translated into infinite layers. These infinite possibilities or layers can in fact be added or subtracted as shown when Alter can create and destroy reality whenever she wants. This would make no difference to Oblivion standing above it entirely which would qualify for a high 1A scaling. Wait a second. I said that Altair was unbound by the creators. Oh, pfft. She's unbound. She's just boundless. All right, GG's. She's infinite layers in a boundless. All right, video over. But seriously though, Yogiri is nowhere near this level of power. Fucking hell, Kaz gets bodied by Altair, just like all these other fodder characters. I can't even believe I actually took my time to explain all that scaling for Altair, which I will never have to do again. All right, guys, being very realistic right now, Yogiri is not above actual creators of his own story. I feel like there's no point in scaling that Muppet ass bitch. Like, what do you want me to say about his weak ass scaling? I look for infinite dimensions and I couldn't find any. What, there was one thing, what, infinite timelines or some shit, but like, th th there wasn't even a good basis for that. People say there's countless dimensions in his verse. Again, countless does not mean infinite. Again, now going back to what I was saying about Yogiri scaling, I don't see him being anything higher than 5D because of some abilities and scans that I will be showing later. Again, anything higher than 5D is just uber, uber wank. Odinus, you wanked Altair. No, 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 I didn't. Nope, sure didn't. Nope, nope, nope. I told you guys this would be a long video. Now, if you guys are still around, I just want to say thank you for sticking through my long ass explanation about Altair, which I probably won't ever, ever, ever repeat. But if you are still here, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, seriously, for listening to my long explanation about why Altair is busted. Now, we finally get to talk about this fodder ass character, Yogiri. Now, what does Yogiri do? Honestly, that's a very good question, but if you know Yogiri, we all know what his ability is, and that's called instant death. Yogiri Yogiri's main ability consists of killing anyone or anything with a single thought. Depending on the circumstances, this ability is automatically triggered. This can also be used to kill non-living things like robots, doors, whatever it may be, anything that's just not moving. He can manipulate curses. He can know powers by killing the actual power itself. He can kill souls. He is capable of killing immortal beings who have eternal life who can easily regenerate their entire existence. Resurrection abilities are completely negated and not even creatures whose concept of death are inapplicable are exceptions to this power. He killed Alizda who possessed parasitic immortality. He can kill undead creatures and is able to negate Sage's immortalities which are reliant on the Sage's stones. Completely bypassed Lane's immortality where a true form was residing in another dimension. Yogiri in fact did kill UEG and no I will not translate it because yes I am that lazy. Yogiri has fate and plot manipulation but it's nothing to the level of Altair. Yogiri's existence possesses an absurd amount of fate value, completely dwarfing even those of the sword saints. People with high fate value are protected by a meta story, where they are essentially become the protagonists of that world. This allows them to avoid any dreadful events and are completely impossible to defeat even against overwhelmingly strong opponents. I always saw every future and possibility that can guide Yogiri to victory, so much that it is also implied that his existence is tied to not only that, but a single future where he wins in the end. EXCEPT THIS BITCH ISN'T WINNING AGAINST ALTAIR! Homie can't even beat Tomokami Joe! Yogiri is omnipresent and he has abstract existence and non-existence physiology. He embodies and represents the non-existence from which everything returns to their ends or death. This being something that surpasses even UEG's nature. Now let me explain why people only classify Yogiri as hyperversal or maybe high hyperversal. He is not higher than anything that's hyperversal. Outer Yogiri is stupid! While this dog shit series is getting an anime very soon, this series does in fact have dimensions on dimensions. The fifth dimensional abyss is only a fraction of his true self and he can manipulate it at will. He represents the end of all existence, non-existence, and phenomena. Standing beyond the conceptual hierarchy of the heavenly records and a higher dimensional C, as well as being incapable and incomprehensible, sorry, imperceivable, my bad, from the point of view of a higher dimensional being that resides in the C. Okay, so he's a higher dimensional being, but still, that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, sure, he effortlessly destroyed and he even transcends UEG, which is time and space, and even the heavenly record of that multiverse. Again, going back to this infinite timeline shit that I hear people talk about Yogiri, I have not seen any proof of this infinite timeline shit being, like, known. And if it really was infinite, Infinite? How can people say countless? Countless is not the same thing as infinite. You've been busted, fool! B -b -b busted, Benson! B -b busted! Yogiri is only hybrid, and I know all you douche nozzles wank these dimensions on dimensions and instant death so 
fucking hard. Get out of here with that shit! Yoguri isn't anything close to our god Altair. I am well aware I didn't go into depth with Yoguri as much as I did Altair, but being realistic, Yoguri isn't shit. Why would I take the time to make this video even longer to explain Yoguri's scaling, which doesn't even compare to Altair's? It's just stupid. In this case right here, Altair far outscales and outhaxes Yoguri. Yoguri is overwhelmed trash with very limited abilities compared to Altair. Altair has unlimited abilities. Infinite abilities! Altair slams his fodder of a character. Her hacks, her scalings, again, they far exceed this basic, generic, isekai bitch! SCP? Hajin? Kaz? Yeah, they get bodied too. It's just objective facts. Don't get butt hurt now. I've talked for way too long, and honestly, I've really enjoyed talking about Altair and finally introducing her to the channel. I very much appreciate that you guys made it this far into the video, even if you are still here. Altair slams Goku and Saitama every effortlessly and honestly i got nothing more to say thank you guys so much i hope you guys have a blessed christmas and yeah i'm out i'll see you guys in the next video peace